morning everybody it is so good to have you here with me imagine if you have your vision as the car with the right team imagine how quick that vision will come into the footsteps something that was taking five years six three months this morning is all about the leadership and influence influence Hi everybody, I greet you. My name is Carl Hendricks from The Inside Show. A warm welcome to you again. It's so beautiful to have you online again. I want you to subscribe and please hit that bell because every time when we come online, you will know of it. This morning, we've got a wonderful, wonderful show here. And with me in the studio, I've got a medical doctor here, a very beautiful medical doctor. I don't mind this doctor work work on me at any point in time. She can test my heart and my lungs and anything. Uh, it's so beautiful to have such a beautiful, you can't believe that doctors are so smart and beautiful. But uh, I've got a beautiful Dr. Mary Adam with me in the studio with, with, with me today. And I call her the dancing doctor. You will, you will soon know why she's called the dancing doctor the, the the show today is rather interesting because we're going to discuss around how uh, young people think they are invincible they think they can live the way they want to they can eat what they want to and they just think that they're invincible and we're going to ask the dancing doctor here today exactly and by the way we're going to ask her every time at least once a month to come on our show the dancing doctor on our show and you know what even by default you receive already a name even if we didn't <laughs> playing that name yeah so that's 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 it you will you will come with the dancing doctor i realize that everybody in every show have a, a medical doctor if it's sdbc one two three or e or doesn't matter there's always a medical doctor that comes in with advice and month to month we will advise you on different things but but this morning i just want to take this wonderful opportunity to welcome here in the inside studio the most beautiful dancing doctor mary adam yes <laughs> thank you so much yeah. Yeah. Dr. Mary, tell us a little about yourself. Uh, where you're from? Are you married? Are you not married? And stuff like that. Whatever you feel like telling us now before you, we, we get to your credentials. Thank you very much. Thank you so much uh, to the Insight Show for having me here uh, this morning. Uh, it's such an honor and a privilege uh, to be part of this. It's it's so mind uh, like boggling, you know. Sometimes you like just take a breath and mm -hmm. it's just like, oh. but um, it's it's amazing being here. But um, as you've mentioned, uh, I actually dubbed that name uh, way back in um, university where they called really? you the dancing. So doctor. I'm not the first. You're not the first. <laughs> oh. I so much wanted to be the first. Okay, the dancing the doctor. The first in this in this century. <laughs> okay, that. post post um, okay. yeah because I sort of um, shelved that a little bit for for a little bit uh, just to explore other uh, things about myself but uh, yes um, I'm Mary Adam um, I come from El Dorado Park and um, that's my home that's where my parents still live that's where I got my roots and then now I live in the West um, because my parents said it's time to fly yes. and so I, <laughs> I had to spread my wings and um, I'm just grateful um, for all that they've given to me and then I can give it back to um, through myself to my community so it's so awesome to be here because this is just part of that journey great Dr. Mary Adam tell us a little about your before we get into your dancing and before we get to the the, the millennials and the eating habits and the invisibility Ability. yeah before we get to all those nitty gritty stuff it's a rather an interesting show. Um, um, I want you, please, if you don't mind, phone somebody up and say, hey, watch this show because uh, they're discussing eating habits and our lifestyles and uh, sometimes we think we're invincible. But I want you, yeah. please, phone somebody and or, or just uh, share uh, on your platforms uh, this show and so that we you can just learn a little more and learn more about yourself. So I've got a most beautiful picture up there. If you see that picture there, uh, yourself there with your working attire there. Yeah. And and uh, um, uh, with a friend there, of course. Yeah. Who's there standing with you? And look at the socks. What day was it? Why do you guys have socks, socks on? Socks on that are so different. Yeah. I just want to send a shout out to my work colleague, my friend, my choma. Um, this is uh, Dr. Candace Johnson. Uh, we got to meet at Baragwanath Hospital. Um, we share a similar background, actually, but we only got to meet when we met at Baragwanath in um, this phase of our lives. Uh, but it's as if we've known each other for a long time, mm -hmm. uh, the way that we interact. So 
I'm so blessed to have in my life because in your journey, um, you, you need somebody to walk with and she's been that in this part of uh, my life. So it's been, and, and I just love this photo because here we were um, actually celebrating Mental Health Day, uh, particularly for um, healthcare workers. And the whole idea was to wear different color socks and, um, and just to highlight that us as medical um, practitioners also can go through um, some traumatic events, uh, whether it's dealing with patients, whether it is um, at home, and then we bring all of those things together. But we need to recognize it in ourselves that we too can go through uh, ment mental difficulties. And so um, we were just celebrating that together. And it was so profound to share that with her because uh, we've worked this tough time. I can imagine it. it must be very, very hard and very difficult. Uh, sometimes to see all the trauma and the st stuff and the things that you experience at the hospital, yeah. of course, with so many people. Yes. And to have a friend there at least that you can bounce off and somebody that will understand you. Yes. Because you might share with me and I will not really know what you're saying. But yes. the other person will say, don't you worry. That happened to me that time and yeah. this is how I handle it. Or the person can guide you through this whole thing. Through, yeah. Well, with all this, Dr. Mary, give me give me a little background about your 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 career. Yeah. Where, did, where did this love for medicine drop into your heart i mean mm. I, I can imagine when you when you're in primary school uh, who wants to what you would like to be one day and you say a doctor it's like excuse, <laughs> excuse me. me can you hear in the class the others say oh, oh doctor yeah. they, they, they joke with you it's like why you want to be a doctor yeah. and everybody in the class is either a doctor or a, but back in the day when we were at school yeah um uh, within the apartheid times you can it's only nurse mm -hmm. Teacher. teacher yeah <laughs> done. <laughs> done no other Not careers yeah. or police officer, or police officer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. take us on a journey about mm -hmm. your your career take us back back back, back, back. when 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 the, for the first time did this drop into mm -hmm. it and just talk us just through this journey yeah. um so you know how musicians often say they come out of the womb singing or come out of the womb dancing <laughs> yeah. sort of thing or playing football or something yeah. i think i came out of the womb having that desire to want to help people mm -hmm. and just that desire to to make things better in mm -hmm. a way you know the environment better and mm -hmm. lighter um so my first memory is when i was actually in um in pre-primary school what? so it's mary queen immaculate in el dorado park Jeez. it's just opposite clip town mm. so those houses there and i remember if i wasn't the nurse i was the doctor so, <laughs> <laughs> when, so in the play when you were playing house house you, yeah, you yeah, were, no. all of you just can who's sick here come over come, here come here so all those dolls i was either the nurse the one day or i was the doctor the next day yeah so it was always that sort of thing that so that's where i found myself mm. and my dad also just reminds me now and again that at home i always used to to draw crosses, you know, around all over the place, like, mm. you know, and so that's where he sort of had that um, into intuition, not mm -hmm. maybe intuition, but the Holy Spirit also speaking to them as mm -hmm. parents to say that this is perhaps the, the, the direction that I should go in. Mm -hmm. And so for me, even um, in high school, like you say, you know, when people say, no, you know, um, you, <laughs> what do you want to become? Yeah. And then nobody actually knows how to direct and guide and all mm -hmm. of that. Luckily, we had a teacher. This is before life sciences was part of this, the, the curriculum. The curriculum yeah. And so we, we were fortunate in to have a teacher who actually said guys what is it that you want to do mm. and then as you say you pick up your hand and you say i want to do this and then the teacher would then sit down and then create a pathway so you literally write i'm in i'm in grade 10 wow. and then the next step would be for me to look at uh, what are my options which yeah. are my universities yeah. and then so that's how it sort of started the map yeah. basically with regards to this and so um I was at the age of 16. Unfortunately, uh, I, I contracted a malaria and mm. it actually became cerebral malaria. Wow. And so I was hospitalized for, well, I was in a coma for about 14 days. What? And then, yeah, so. Uh, at 16? At 16. And so, you know, at that stage, when you think cerebral malaria, you don't think of the possibility of even one surviving mm. um, that. And then what had happened was I did survive. True. And then to get back into the schooling system, they had said to me that, you know what, the possibility of actually studying further was not really something that I should look at. And, mm. you know, but, um, you know, when you have that drive inside of you that says, no, man, this is not, 
I'm not going to let anybody tell me that this is not who I'm going to become. Yeah. So still that in, was inside deep of me, that desire. deep desire that mm. I needed to be in a space where I'm going to help people. Mm. And the biggest place to do that would mm. be in the healthcare, in mm. healthcare in some way or other. And so I worked very hard with my family, uh, with the community, because at that time we were fortunate to, and this is how the dancing actually came in, is because when I was, came out of hospital, you know, I, I felt like, you know what, I made a promise to God, mm -hmm. you know, in, in, in that state. Mm -hmm. Because I remember, you know, when they speak about the white light, you mm -hmm. know, and having to choose. Because my uncle, who had died in, in, a, in a tragic death in, 20, in 1993, mm -hmm. um, tragic death, and he came to me. In, on a motorbike and said, I'm coming to fetch. And I said, no, but you were supposed to come and fetch us for a particular event and mm -hmm. you didn't come. Mm -hmm. So why are you coming now? Mm -hmm. And so at the same time, there was this bright light that said, either you go with him or you come this way. Wow. And so I opted to go to the light because I was like, no, you already gone. So where am I going? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so then I chose to go to the light and I've made in that time a promise that I'm going to definitely, the dreams that I'd set out before, I have to achieve them. Mm -hmm. That's one. And I don't want to live a sort of, a mundane, boring type yes. of life. You know, I want wow. to get out there. I want to experience life the way life should mm. be experienced. So at the age of 16, I had that moment with God and I said, definitely. And this is coming from somebody who grew up in the church. Mm. So that was a deep, profound desire. moment for me. Mm. Yeah, that desire just came to the forefront. Mm. And so what had happened was we got into a community project started by our church at the time that involved music and dance. Mm -hmm. And through that process now we had to choose between music and dance and dance became more of the the expressive form to do it and the more creative it just opened up my mind mm. and so that's where i said if my mind can be open in this way mm -hmm. you know to 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 the creativity that you know that is out there mm. then i can still pursue my dream yes then i got to matric and um, matric was a little bit more tougher than actually because nobody thought i would actually get there yes <laughs> so but with the teachers that i had we worked hard because because mm. I told him, this is what it is that I want to do. Yes. So we worked hard. Matric wasn't as easy as, as it was. And yet I set a high, stat, a high goal for myself and a high standard because I, I opted to do all my subjects higher mm. grade, which is <laughs> yeah. crazy. Yet I tell you, if, if some, some of the students hear you now, like it's like, oh no, I, I'm not going to kill myself. So you, all your subjects higher grade. All my subjects higher grade, Jeez. you know. And yes, I didn't um, do that well in my, especially science and maths. And, mm. you know, when we're going to speak about the invincibility yeah. that you know young people have i'll bring that in a little bit but essentially um i thought no i am invincible yeah i am gonna do this thing yeah. who told me i can't do it yeah, yeah. i am in matric i'm yeah. gonna do it <laughs> and so i went for it and though i wow. didn't get the greatest of marks um mm. i was still selected well like in the year you know you get selected to go mm. to star school because mm. you know you're a top achiever and i was like mm. me a top achiever come mm. on really yeah. and so then um i i did that through through it and then i also so, um, like I said, my marks weren't that great, but I still, I got a, p a position at um, Wits to do medicine. Mm. And then came another just attack where uh, now I'm, uh, I'm waiting for the results. Mm. And um, they, they actually called up and said, no, you're not going to get your results in the newspaper. Now you can imagine how devastating oh, it is. My and word. I'm sure just as devastating as what is happening now currently to the matrix, yes. that's how I felt. Mm. Because everybody, and you know how it is, when everybody wants to just see their name just in the paper. Your name. Just your yeah. name and maybe <laughs> one distinction or a pa uh, pass. Okay. I, I was aiming at least there. But okay. And I said, because I want to get into medical. Yeah. This is my dream, man. And so... Um, Unfortunately, uh, what had happened was that in the process of uh, my matric year, with the application of the, um, you know, the exams, one paper came back as standard grade, but we sorted it out with the Department mm -hmm. of Education, and they said, no, you're going to write higher grade, because it, it, that was what I had planned for. Mm -hmm. But when the exam came, they gave me the higher grade paper. It went back to the um, Education Department. They said, no, why did I write uh, a higher grade when I was registered for standard grade? What? And so... Um, Unfortunately, I couldn't start my academic year. I had to phone Wits and say, you know what, I can't start at the moment because um, I have to go for a hearing with the Department of Education now. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> just imagine a teenager having to go and sit and plead one's case to say, here's all the documentation, here's all the records, uh, with together the teacher, you know, mm. the individualator that's in charge of the matrix. We sat there, we discussed, only to find, yes, I passed the um, 
and now it was already mid-February mm. and I couldn't get into the, the program. They mm. told me, no, it's already started. I won't be mm. able to catch up. There comes that thing again of you can't, you yes. can't. And I'm like, Ugh. Do you know the message that you're carrying out there for to the millennials out mm. there? Mm. That nothing is impossible. Yeah. Yeah. You can pursue your dreams. Yes. Even, even if you were in a coma, even if you had to... Uh, try to 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 to, to uh, play kind of a catch up yes and even if they decline and do yeah. all that spirit didn't that, leave you that that tenacity yes. that fighting spirit yes mm -hmm. yes it, no it didn't leave mm. uh, but i must tell you that even when, when before i went to that um uh, board meeting mm. i literally went to the altar you know of god and i yes. said god you know what i need you i need Beautiful. this I, 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 you know, I don't have any strength because mm. I've put all my strength into studying. I've mm. put my strength into making sure I, I apply to the mm. universities. I followed my track, you mm. know, but now I need you to show up yes. for me. And, you know, God just dropped in my spirit from Corinthians um, Chronicles. And he said to me, you know what? Go out there tomorrow. The battle is already won. Man. So I just, I just went there. And again, that invincibility, I was like, yeah. mm, <laughs> this is me. This is me. <laughs> so yes. I went in there, got, uh, got, got that, um, um, that pass got that way to go Great. through, but now I had I had no ways nowhere to go. Yes, my dad. We sat down and we and we had a, a de in depth discussion, one on one discussion. He said, "So, what is the plan now? Mm -hmm. Are you going to sit at home? Are you mm -hmm. going to find a job? Are you going to?" And then. Uh, like my dad, you know, um, old school, read, still reading newspapers. So we always used to read newspapers. And he said, ah, I found something that you can do. I said, what am I going to do? This is, not, you know, I mm. want to do it's now. It's too late. It's too late. Yeah. What am I going to do? And he said, no, here's something, um, sports management and medicine, Boston City Campus. Let's see if they will accept you. I said, but everybody's telling me it's late. Mm. He said, no, P pick yourself up. Let's go and find mm. out. My dad um, drove me to, my dad was very strict. So... Mm. <laughs> Uh, even you just have time, to follow. You just have you like, follow me. <laughs> yeah. No, we have a discussion. We have a discussion. What is the plan of action? Yeah. Okay. Let's, let's follow through. Let's go through. Yeah. Let's go. But then not taking a taxi. Yeah. Before you take the taxi, let's find the route. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> he'll take us on the route and then he'll, he'll say, okay, next time you go. Okay. So now the first time we went and then I met with... Um, the um, principal uh, of the time for the sports management program and um, she looked at me and said you know what i don't know hey they already they're about to write an exam in two weeks do mm -hmm. you think you'll be able to do it i said give me a chance mm -hmm. if i don't make it then i, I will gladly walk away mm -hmm. i'll pay just the registration mm -hmm. so that i have my spot mm -hmm. and then i'll walk away mm -hmm. I, I, I wrote that exam. It was not easy, but I managed to pass it with yeah. distinction. I, and she said, the okay, dancing continue. Doctor. <laughs> the dancing so, doctor. Yeah, I'm the dancing doctor. Yeah, you. I'm telling you. Keep so, on showing off you on my show. Yeah, 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 yeah I must. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a quality then, show. So, so you, you bring quality people you, here. Yeah, you, you ended, ended up on a, in the management course. Yes. For, my word. For sports management. But, but yeah. today, is that helping you? Yes, it is. Yeah. My <laughs> so, word. So um, I don't know, because uh, through your services, um, that uh, when we were in house service, you always say to us, look at your hands, mm. you know. Uh, in your hands you have something yes you know and you know and, and always when i just even go home and i go like what is in my hands? Yes. what is in my hands and then i always it just comes it comes through me and so with that with the sports management um you remember we had a um invite one function where all the departments needed to have um um, you know, like showcase their department. Mm -hmm. And at that time, we, we had just introduced the first aid team, the medical team to the, to the, to the well, we reintroduced it. And so we were fancy enough. You said, go wild, do mm. what you want to do. And so we brought in an ambulance and an ambulance crew and we wanted to bring the ambulance in. I don't know if you remember that. Yes, yes, yes. And I so um, the coordinator of that company, um, so Lance Adams organized um, at Miss um, Tully. And so she's also got a background in nursing but runs this uh, paramedic company but also she works with teams mm. sports in mm. sports and so she called me up one day and said hey doc you know what um, I need a sports doctor mm. would you be able to come I'm contracted to work with a sports team wow. uh, can you come and do um, come interview let's see what what it's mm. about and so through that process 
Um, and through ministry, once again, mm. <laughs> God opened another door. And so I worked with a, a football club called Maccabi Football um, for about a year. Yes. Um, so we did um, their local um, games and I was the, the uh, medical doctor, the sports doctor Fantastic. for that team. Fantastic. And so what is in your hands? Yeah. So it's that um, sports management <laughs> uh, diploma. So how did you end up eventually to, 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 to finish your career within the, in medicine? medicine? Yes. So again, I sat down with my dad <laughs> and my dad said um uh, so you're finishing this what do you think um are you going to now apply one before you know the year um are you going to apply again for it and i said i think i'm a little bit um demotivated but let's apply let's see mm. uh, but before i actually submitted my application um one of the members of my church adele pullen uh, came up to me and uh, was working at rao it's mm. now currently known as uj mm. and uh, she said you know what they've got um uh, the, an, an awesome nursing program. It's close to medicine, so if you f you you you're still thinking about you know getting into that field, think about it and go. So I needed to really be cogn cognizant of the fact that I'm the eldest of four children. Um, that by studying nursing, I would lay a foundation of my medical career. At the same time, I would also get a stipend, which would be able to allow to pay for my studies, my travel to mm. school, and at the same time, relieve my parents so that my siblings yeah. would also have an opportunity to continue with their schooling. Mm. So I needed to have that, um, you know, overview, like foresight and just insight about, you know, not being selfish and taking all the monies that they've exactly. saved up for us to study. So I needed to think about that. So then I, I applied to Rao and I got into the nursing program. I, I I also uh, excelled in that program. I completed the degree because my dad again sat down. We sat down and said, are you going to finish this? Or are you going to apply? Yes. Then I said, because I want to, this stipend will, al stipend will allow me to complete this degree. Mm. At the same time, I can save up. And if that desire in me, if I still feel like I want to do medicine, mm. whatever I've saved up from that stipend, mm. because I lived at home, you know, I, and also this is where I, I got into into dancing on a, on a professional level now. They paid, they gave a bursary, mm -hmm. so that was amazing. So that I managed to pay for my studies through that platform. Mm -hmm. And this is where you see this uh, yeah. pictures here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so so th that picture, the, the bigger one in the center, yes. talk me through that picture. Yes, so this picture here was actually uh, my first year at um, Rao University. When you get introduced to the campus life, you need to be part of a society or something like that. So if you're not on campus, like living on campus, you need to be part of a day house. Mm. So the day house, they introduced us to the Rao Song and Dance Company. And then this was that. And this was in 2000 and, uh, 2001, mm. uh, where they were doing the Bermina, yeah, uh, Bermina Command. What you yes. have here. This is our playbook. So I kept all my playbooks oh. uh, from <laughs> the time that I performed with them because it has that sentimental value, but also all the cast members would write notes to each other to say, well done, lovely working with you. Mm -hmm. So all those memories just come back, you know, into, into the fold. And so this was a, a, a photo taken just in, 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 with the background there because you know how these stages they become so grand and mm. they just become full of life mm. so this was what um this was there so it was a basically a god that we were worshiping you know because at that time it's like a medieval mm. sort of time yeah. so yeah the picture on the left there top yes that was actually um the moon prince and that one was this one over here and here basically it's also on a um an african folk tale um oh. and so there i was a midwife <laughs> Oh my God! So you, it just follows me you're everywhere. Back again in medicine. Yes, yes, yes. Because you can <laughs> even see in plays. Eh? Even in plays, you know. Yeah. And what was interesting for my first uh, three years, they didn't know that I was actually nursing because all these activities would happen after class. Uh, the rehearsals would happen at night. So you know, they actually thought at one point they actually said, "No, we thought you were in marketing, man. Yeah. What are you doing?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they didn't know. So you see that where that dancing doctor, because yeah. I, they also knew that desire in yeah. me to one day study medicine but yeah. for them i was this marketeer person uh, you know in in the creative industry but this is where i found my creative yeah. space listen let's move on yes. to the show here because you know um uh, this the first show is more about introducing you to the show yeah. and then when we get you back on set at any other point in time as the yeah. dancing doctor we'll just hit it from the hip or shoot from the hip immediately yeah. well yes. we're going to discuss uh, around the millennials yeah yeah and i want you just to to, to help me here because millennials at times have uh, eating habits mm. and uh, they think they are completely invincible they think they can eat at anything at any point in time 
How good and how bad is that? Well, you know, we always have to have a balance in mm -hmm. everything that we do. Mm -hmm. If there's no balance, then we, 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 we sort of not in equilibrium with ourselves. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing about young people is that we think that, you know, everything it doesn't have to balance out yet. Mm -hmm. we, there will come a time in life that it will balance out. But the matter of fact is that if you start right, you'll finish right mm -hmm. or you'll finish strong. And that's also a, a wonderful quote that you always say is that mm -hmm. we must finish strong. Yeah. So if we start right, we will finish strong. So it's very important to what you put in your body now. What because you put in your body now. eventually it will catch up. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, you know, before we venture further into, I want to play a little game with you here. Mm -hmm. And uh, so wherever you catch it, left or right thumb, it doesn't matter. Because then all I want you to do is just to read on, on the thumb. Right, okay. right. There you go. What do you Good. see there? Uh, share a coping skill you use today. Yes. So it was just taking deep breaths mm -hmm. um, uh, just to center one, center myself, basically. Mm -hmm. That's what the coping skill I use today. And, and you, you know, would you agree with me specifically in, in medicine? Mm. You need a lot of coping skills because you yes. see stuff on a daily basis. On a daily basis. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and just on that note, your role at Paraguana mm -hmm. right now, what do you do? So I'm currently in the obstetrics and gynecology department. Most people would know it as maternity. Mm. So I work in infectious disease. Uh, so that's like all your, your um, uh, conditions, medical conditions that can spread easily from one person to another. Mm -hmm. So um, things like malaria, meningitis, um, TB, mm -hmm. um, and now um, the, the well-known COVID. Mm -hmm. So those are the type of conditions. And yes, even listeriosis, let me actually mention that one because I think we've forgotten about the Poloni disease okay. that was with us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember one day on, on, on Facebook. Oh, must I throw this back to you? No, yeah, just throw okay. it back. I'm not going to read. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You know, one day on, on I, I, somebody recalled, I don't know what year was it, Paloni yeah. story. Can you remember that what year? That was in 2018. Yeah, 2018. 2018. So somebody mentioned something about, can you remember one day Paloni wanted to kill us? Yay. It's like, it's like, yeah, I said, yeah, I remember yeah, that. <laughs> yeah. Now, l let's get to this whole invincible mm. thing about uh, young people. I'm going to let you off the hook now and you can just wherever wherever you want to start yeah what is it that you want to share with us today yeah so i think with the invincibility thing is that we really think th that we're untouchable and i still say we because i still feel like yeah, I'm in you know why i almost <laughs> stopped you i said i said i almost stopped you there it's like you know you're placing me here on the set and you say we we young people and it's like now oh, now where do i fit into this whole thing you know? <laughs> Perhaps you started strong and you're going strong. <laughs> yeah, no. So we, the, the thing is, we believe that we're invincible because um, in every aspect of our lives, whether it's in our, in our studying, whether it is in our eating, whether mm. it's in our behavior as human beings, mm. we think that we're untouchable and that there are no consequences to what it is that we do. Mm. Uh, or the, there will be no repercussion or the outcomes will always be in our favor mm -hmm. because we are young, mm -hmm. you know. So famously you know how it says that um youth is wasted on the young yeah. <laughs> is it that is that the quote so what happens is that I, I remember now in the beginning yes you, you were saying we now I, i'm not part of your <laughs> we so so keep your quotes for yourself <laughs> Uh, Leandra, uh, uh, I just want to call our producer yes. in here because no. I want I want her to get involved with questions here and so on. Yes. But you you go ahead. No problem. Yes. Mm. So um, and in just in terms of let's go. Um, let me start from the studying part of things, mm. and uh, it's so relevant now because it's such a hot topic in terms of w the decisions that were made with regards to the to the matric uh, mm. group with the leaking of the papers. Mm. And I heard one student mm. actually mentioning, you know, um, why must we be responsible for the actions of adults? Mm -hmm. Because who had the paper? It mm. was adults but exactly. who's having so who's having to deal with the repercussions mm. but then just also to take it away from that point specifically but because of the impact of studying and what that would have on your future mm. if you don't put in the work now mm. you won't actually get to your future the way that you thought you would mm. or in terms of the timelines that mm. you want to mm. and taking from my journey you can put everything in place but yes there are some external things that might happen um, but are you still willing to go for it mm. take that invincibility that you have that mm. power 
power that you mm. have and say, I'm going to do this, mm. but I'm still going to, uh, this, this is my vision. This is what might attack me. Because you can't predict all of that, mm. no matter how young you are. <laughs> Remember, our brains are so of course, immature. Yeah. Like they're immature. They, they, they don't have the world view mm. that maybe our, ad our, our adults, <laughs> our parents, you know, have. Because mm. there's just so much input that can come from that. Mm. But as young people, we often think, you know what? I can do this by mm -hmm. myself. I've mm -hmm. got it. I've got what it takes. You know, but you need that. And that comes from that studying point of view. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the eating, you know, start going back there. Because again, if you're a young person and you, you're studying, you're doing, uh, you're doing sports, you're doing this. If you put th the correct foods into your bodies, and now we're speaking about actually looking at the food, not, uh, um, not how much you eat now it's about what you eat mm -hmm. because we can go forth and we can eat in smaller portions you can have intermittent diet you can have you know um, um sized uh, or calorie counting diets but at the same time it's it's more of how much how, how it's not what you eat it's I'm sorry it's not how much you eat but it's what you, what eat. you eat so we need to watch that and as young people we don't because we so, now it's about um and i love this ad um with the gogos i don't know if you seen this where they're actually looking at apps and now you can get an app and you can choose what it oh, is yeah, that you oh, want yeah, oh, yeah. so it's the uber eats is yeah. it uber eats yeah. but it's all these fancy foods now this is the, now we can see that transition from young people to old people or momocho people <laughs> <laughs> you see that transition that they also think that they're invincible but if you actually pay attention to what that advert is actually doing mm. it can expose you <laughs> yeah you, you know what i i want to welcome uh leandra here she's our producer um um, uh, while while you on the line i just want to get some tea there for me sure but you go ahead and uh but this is a laid back show laid and back. we just enjoy on the side. so awesome. he the doctor he the dancing doctor with some questions there you know yeah. early on when when dr mary walked in because actually doc told me that um when we were discussing the program he told me about your you that you uh, the dancing doctor and yeah. that you were in drama and i was very upset because <laughs> as you know we have a drama department and i was like so why did dr mary not join our department <laughs> And I'm like, oh, so you are first aids now, hey? <laughs> so I was a little bit upset about that, but yeah. I do understand there was a need. Yeah. Okay, in the organization for us, we needed um, a first aid team. Yeah. And you're the perfect person for that oh, because it's nice to see a friendly face. I, I told you earlier yeah. um, that like when I go to the doctor, especially as a woman, you know, you hear that you must go for breast examinations, which yes. is important. You must go for pap smears. It's important. Yes. Those kinds of things um, to check for cancers and things like that. Yeah. And I was saying that it's so intimidating because you're like, oh my oh gosh. My yeah. But it's so lovely to see a friendly face. And because I know you like in the corridors walking and stuff, I'm like, you know what? I would love to walk in <laughs> and have a doctor like Dr. Mary yeah. examine me. Um, but <laughs> what I really you. wanted to ask you on this in, in invincibility of, of young mm. people, my mm self included doc Thank you. um a millennial <laughs> over here <laughs> but um so when 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 um, i'm gonna go back to COVID 19 when yeah. when it hit yes. right um in the beginning of the year i think yes. it was around about march yeah um, it was mostly young people and I've seen this like there was videos trending where young people were saying because in America at the time it was the time of the summer break I think it yeah. was so obviously with March. summer break you go to the beach, the beach and there's and like they have yeah, these have summer camps yeah it's like, like the that. rage um, yes, fest that, happened, that happened yeah by us yeah and I saw so many young people and they were like you know what um, because COVID was new yes. at the time. So you, you didn't really know what to expect. Yeah. Um, and they were saying, so a lot of people came with myths like, no, 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 um, black people can't get it. Mm -hmm. And um, young people can't get it. Yeah. And babies can't get it. Yeah. And it's only for old people. Yes. And that's what they were saying. They're like, no, we're going to go to this fest because we are strong and yeah. these bodybuilders we're we and we're free. young and we mm -hmm. are, you mm -hmm. know, full of vitality. Yeah. And so, so just like um, if you can deal with some of the myths that young people have with mm. regards to even like with certain dis sicknesses and diseases yeah. i mean you explained your story um um cerebral malaria, malaria that yeah. word <laughs> rare, rare. <laughs> but you didn't expect it nobody mm. expects i mean even elderly people they yes. don't expect to get sick yeah but the, what is the importance of checking going for regular checkups and not just eating healthy yeah 
Yeah, so yes, um, we often think that there are certain diseases that are just left for when you are older. So mm. you can do what you want when you are younger and you'll deal with it when you're older. Yes. But it's important to start checking from a young age if you suspect that there is something that's mm. not fitting with you because all of us have that, you know, we know our bodies, no yes. matter how you think you are, mm. you know your body and you know, and especially women more so than men, yes. know their changes in their body. They they experience their changes more, more than what men Men would experience mm. in their bodies. Mm. So um, when one notices that there is something wrong, then to actually then go, like say to myself, and now we have Google, so it makes it a lot more interesting. Yes. And that's where young people can actually take advantage of mm. what is available to them. Now, yes. Don't be invincible to such a point that you get lost into um, this fourth industrial revolution that you don't actually use it to your advantage. Yes. So when you recognize that there's something wrong in your body, you can explore. And I'm not afraid with uh, anybody exploring, um, you know, going onto Google and saying, mm. you know what, this is my symptom. I've got headache. I've got this. I've got this. But don't get a shock now when it tells you that you've got fourth, not even fourth stage, fourth yes. degree cancer. Yes. You know, some people no. will mix words up now. It's so <laughs> But what then happens is that yeah. you say, okay, this is what this thing is telling me. But mm. then you sit down and you don't do anything about mm -hmm. it. Yes. So, but then you take this information and you say, you know what, let me go and actually now speak to my physician and say, or my GP or my, or specialist and say, this is what my, this is what my symptoms are. Mm. This is what I think I'm having. Mm. Um, can you help me? Yes. You know, not to go in and say, hey, I've got fourth degree cancer. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, <ooh>. yeah. <laughs> let's go back. Let's go back to medical school. But um, yes. the thing is to say, I recognize that there's something wrong in my body. If mm -hmm. you want to do research about it, you can, but importantly to seek out medical mm -hmm. health. And what's beautiful about a South African healthcare system, we have the Batupile principles, which mm -hmm. speak about you actually, if you're not happy with your current physician or you're not happy with the information that you have from your, from your first point of contact, you can go to, a, you can have a second opinion. Mm -hmm. And not that the first opinion, it's, it doesn't hold weight, but it's just that you don't connect mm -hmm. with with what the person what the physician is saying that's also it's not wrong to go then and ask for a second uh, opinion it's your right to do that mm -hmm. it's also your responsibility to say i want to know for my health so that's the one thing yeah the second thing is that there are set um healthcare guidelines that are in place for any country across the world. Mm -hmm. So for example, you mentioned breast examination, pap smears. Mm. And the thing is, once you find that, you know, we, we speak about it all the time and we have the October health month, you know, that speaks about different cancers. But if I can zone it in on uh, breast cancer, mm. what happens is that we educate women on breast examinations, which you can do at any time. Mm. But then we advise that every year, at least to be checked by a physician once a year. If you've high risk, you should, and you suspect that you've got a lump, you go immediately. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now let's say pap smears. This is very, something that is very um, topical, sometimes almost controversial, mm. because we also have to deal with HIV AIDS. Now, when you think about, I'm going to bring the invincibility of this one as well, because it mm. speaks about human behavior and what happens with young people again is that thing. I'm young. I can't get HIV. Mm -hmm. This person doesn't have HIV. Look how healthy they look, yeah. mm -hmm. you know? So again, it's that a misidea and misconception. Mm. That, so then what happens is that now you're f a young female, you're sexually active. That's mm -hmm. okay. If you, if you, that's your choice that you've made, mm. but then the person doesn't use uh, condoms, which is protection, doesn't use um, uh, contraception, which helps prevent pregnancy. Because if you have goals in life, you want to have things set into place. Yeah. So what happens is that then one also doesn't then once they become sexually active, doesn't do their pap smears. Mm. So then what happens you now the guidelines say that, you know what, you need to have a pap smear All the previous guidelines were saying that you need to have a pap smear at age 30. But if you started having sex at 16, yeah, mm -hmm. you know, and unprotected sex, you've contracted mm. HIV, for example, example so when should you go for your pap smear mm -hmm. sure. so you should go so it's yes. earlier now it's, it's, uh, yeah no so it's, it's yes uh, for, for technically for because you started so being the, active at the earlier, earlier age, age yeah. so then you should start taking care of yourself much earlier exactly you shouldn't be thinking that no i'm invincible because it's only i need to go at 30, 30. for yes. screening mm. so the the guideline mm. says that overall most women mm. should have their pap smears at 30. let's talk let's talk about men yes. because back in the day mm. yes. uh, they say for you must go for a test on prostate cancer yes at a specific age and it was yeah. rather you a big age mm. i can't yes. remember 40. what was it 40. 40. Yeah. now what yeah. what's the situation now yes so again once one has any again it's about listening to your body so if there's a change in bowel movement mm. and you 
were worried even about having a uh, so bowel movement. I'm talking about number two. And then there's also a change in the urination mm -hmm. because that's one of the first signs that something is actually not right. Mm -hmm. So either the way it's flowing or how it, it's painful mm -hmm. or things like that. And so it's again paying attention to your body. And often men, I'm sorry, uh, Doc, sorry to the gentleman oh, in the studio. Man. Often. <laughs> <laughs> you need some persuasion. You need some yeah. persuasion. Yeah. And so what happens is that after some serious persuasion, then go to the to the to the doctor. Mm -hmm. And then so you see now, let's say you are 35 and you start having these symptoms, uh, waking up at night, not urinating well, um, having difficulty with bowel movements, and then. They, then you say, but I'm not 40, so mm -hmm. I don't need my prostate to be checked mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. I'm going to wait for 40. Mm -hmm. So what happens when you approach it at 40? Mm -hmm. Already it might be end stage or terminal, wow. whatever the condition wow. might, might be. Yeah. So this is, this yeah. is the thing. So Leandra, from, uh, from your perspective, mm. is there any other questions? Yeah, also just the thing mm. of... Um, I've, 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 I've heard people say that it's more stressful. Life now is more stressful, especially at a younger, a, mm -hmm. younger age. Mm -hmm. And so things like heart attacks and cholesterol yes. and high blood pressure. It was also an old person thing. Yes. Um, the, you must, the elderly yes. must go for high blood. They're very modest and in the studio here. <laughs> hey, JC. No, no, no. They're very no. modest in the studio. They kind of, they kind of, this is a, come, come, I, come, I coin this moment. Eh? This is a let you feel good moment. Yes. It, which just let you you know we just let you feel good now but it's you, Christmas the, time. <laughs> <laughs> so but it was it was, yeah, it was but, reserved but for, for elderly people yes, they're yes, like no yes. hypertension and high diabetes, blood diabetes cholesterol, cholesterol. Hmm. you know i can't get a heart attack i'm only 20 yes. but mm. i've heard of like 18 year olds yes. getting heart attacks mm. so also on that note yeah it's eating healthy yeah. um because nowadays I feel like, you know, as a young person myself, I see my peers mm. Mm. Um, drinking and smoking all sorts of stuff because yes. now you have e-cigarettes mm. yes. and now you have all these extra things yes. that wasn't back in, in, mm -hmm. in the old day. Mm -hmm. Like there was mm -hmm. just cigarettes and there was pipes. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think that was it. Yeah, she's now, <laughs> now, she's now, she's <laughs> now there's like all these yes. extra things yeah. and they say yes. it's healthier. But mm. how healthy is it? Again, it goes to that invincible. Thing, thing, yeah. because that's what i mean i've seen attitudes of my peers changing like they smoke anyway they smoke amongst kids they smoke mm. amongst and it's that at you were talking about behavior yes you know and how um culture and behavior influences mm. your health mm. so if you can maybe just hit on that topic as well and if i can excuse yes, myself I'm gonna, i'm gonna let you go to go and produce it. <laughs> thank yeah. you i hope we're doing well without you on the other side yeah. i hope so yeah, <laughs> yeah. okay thank then. You. Thank you. you go ahead yeah. brilliant question question and yeah. uh, dr mary adam and uh, it's so true that young mm -hmm. people think they are completely invincible yes and uh, if you consider the mere fact that young people now uh, i was watching a soccer match some time ago mm. when i say sometime could be more than a year ago yeah. one guy died on the on the like on the with in the perfect healthy condition yeah. Yeah. i mean he died with a heart attack yeah. on the pitch yeah. how is it possible in the 21st century well, again, it's um, really looking at the basics. And I think, like I've mentioned before, where people, um, we often have that uh, complex about ourselves. I can do it. I, mm. you know, and it's not wrong to have that in certain instances, but when your body's talking to you and you're not actually paying attention to it, because in, in an instance like that, and, 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 and um, the viewers and, and, and the people in the studio mustn't take me wrong on, on this, is that, you know, let's say, for example, the young, um, the athlete, because it happens a lot with pro athletes, that they might have had flu-like symptoms uh, mm. previously, but, um, and then it's a viral infection, mm. and then from um, a th uh, upper respiratory tract infection, that actually then can go to the valves of the heart and mm. actually damage the valves of the heart. If one does not pay attention to that, mm. that then can lead to more serious conditions and if one doesn't actually get treatment, then, you know, it can lead to more um, adverse outcomes. So it's really important to get back to the basics when one wants to look at oneself. If you want to be invincible, you take care of yourself like proper from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And that comes down to the type of foods that you eat, the behavioral choices that one makes. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Leandra was speaking about, you know, choosing to smoke cigarettes versus vaping, you know, and, I, and now research is coming out and saying that, you know, equally they, they're harmful um, to, the, to the health of individuals. And as she had mentioned, you know, you feel more comfortable because this one doesn't produce this type of smoke or it produces, but at the end of the day, tobacco is tobacco. Mm -hmm. So we need to be very cognizant of that. And, um, 
Um, so going back to the basics, mm. and if you want to be truly invincible, take care of yourself so mm -hmm. that you can live a good life um, mm -hmm. throughout, uh, throughout, uh, throughout <laughs> your lifetime, yes. basically. You know what, it's, there's one thing, and, and I, th I think uh, JC, who's behind the camera there, will, will most probably be interested in this mm. one. Mm. Um, uh, uh, young people want to get muscle. Yeah. Quick, 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 mm -hmm. quick. So they don't want to work it out for too long yeah. in a gym and so on. And there's a lot of products on yeah. the market. Now, how good and how bad is it? And what's the, the after effect, mm -hmm. if there's any, yeah. uh, futuristically or because it, I, I wouldn't mind to have a beautiful yeah. muscle I think body. We, oh, oh. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah, think all exactly. of us. Without doing the job, you know, yeah. it's like, yeah. So, so, so how good and how bad is that? Yeah, I mean, there are good things and bad things to everything in life. And one again has to come down to balance. Mm. And we often speak about an 80-20 rule. Mm. And it's 80% uh, um, your diet. So what it is that you're putting into your body. Mm. And, and then eight, uh, the 20% is the exercise and, and the maintenance of it. So when we're looking at the diet, it has to be a balanced diet. And now we're looking at, you know, really balancing it towards a plant-based diet. Mm. Um, you know, and now we're speaking about um, introducing the proteins, you know, into our diet. So that's an important part um, that um, our generation is actually exploring mm -hmm. now more than ever. Mm -hmm. We've seen um, different um, diets, different products come and different countries coming up with different things, um, not necessarily for their population, because now in this time of social media, it can go anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, products can go anywhere. But the uh, uh, important part is to say, what is it that you put in your body? Does it agree with your body? Mm -hmm. Because if it doesn't agree, body you can end up with um, what we call target organ damage mm -hmm. and those are things where you know you can um, particularly the kidneys the liver uh, mm -hmm. the kidneys and the liver mm -hmm. and then obviously the general talk body. a little about that the kidneys and the liver mm -hmm. specifically if it's tablets uh, yeah. it doesn't matter what it is uh, had it tablets or whatever mm -hmm. uh, if it's just these powders that they use just to to build to boost, muscle yeah. or to boost yeah. them or maybe just uh, um, the Red Bull or yeah. something that type of yeah. energy with high sugar levels and so yeah. talk a little about that how that damage you yeah because I know uh, some of the young young people to, to stay awake mm. they, mm. they the intake is huge on those things yeah. Yeah. so so how harmful is that yeah so I think we all have our thing that we gravitate towards so some might gravitate towards coffee cold drink mm. uh, or, um, yeah let me say cold drink I won't say brands and then <laughs> teas <laughs> Just to keep us going. And then, yes, obviously on the market, there's the quick fix things that, that come onto the plate, the, the energy drinks, you know, that give you that fast boost. Mm. But also in the quantity that one takes them, one should again take note of that. For example, in tea, let's look at tea, for example. In tea, we have what we call tenon. And tenon is a, is a product that obviously puts everything together. But what happens is that if you, somebody who has already uh, anemia, which most people call low blood, but mm. it's actually anemia or the low HB, that also then con con can contribute to that, mm. to an anemia state. And mm. then what happens with anemia? You have generalized fatigue, you have brittle nails, you have um, ha weak hair falling out. <laughs> you see now. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you see, this is like you when know, one is you know, doing Doctor Google. You know these youngsters <laughs> here on my show, these young doctors on my show, they, they have a modest way of getting to be here. Yeah. In many ways, eh, in many ways, eh. um, you have a question, JC. You're more than welcome to come around if you want to. Yeah, yeah. So, so rather interesting. <laughs> yes. I'm enjoying so, this. You know, mm. the invincibility of young yes. people. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I want to just touch on the the, the energy the, drinks. Yes, yes. You know, because with the energy drinks as well, you know what it is it's one caffeine and it's also sugar mm. and that what pushes the drop that pushes you so also the caffeine is quite addictive isn't it mm. because you need it now yes, to keep on the yes, go yes. the go the go yes, yes. and so what happens is that you continue co to consume it and sometimes there's an imbalance in t what happens then the there's an imbalance in terms of your electrolytes mm -hmm. so then you pumping this in and then in, into your system and then what continues to happen is that there's a shift in your electrolyte uh, balance then you can get things like pins and needles you know again a generalized fatigue so one should look out for these things the biggest thing is that a lot of young people will experience is the heart palpitations and then you get insomnia mm. that now pursues uh, following that because now your body's so wired to live on this that you actually need it to continue uh, working or living or doing things before i give jc opportunity just one more thing from mm -hmm. my side i just want to know uh, what my observation for where i stand yeah i notice there's a lot of young people 
that's super tired these days. Yeah. What could that be? Uh, is it, I don't know. Mm. J- help us as a doctor here. So it could be a multi- multitude of things because we have uh, chronic uh, exhaustion and you can see a lot of young people have to keep up with a lot of things in this generation. So whether it's social media, whether it's the academics, whether it's, so that's that FOMO um, sort of thing that's happening. You know, the fear of uh, missing out. Yeah. yeah. The, you see, even me, I, I get it sometimes. I don't get it sometimes. <laughs> she's giving her age away. Yeah. So, so she, when she so gets it, yeah, when she doesn't get it, then she's on my age. When she <laughs> Get this on the other age, yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. Well, uh, uh, JC, what, what, what do you have there? Okay, so first and foremost, it's such an honor and a privilege being in the studio next to two doctors. Hey. <clears throat> <laughs> but I want to find out what, what's your take on, on vegan? Because I, I do believe that, that we, need, we need a balanced diet, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. And your body needs carbs mm-hmm. and a whole lot of other things as well. Yeah. Even junk food to a certain extent. Yeah. I, I, th- I believe <laughs> because if, if you're too strict on a diet, diet, what I believe is after a month or so, mm-hmm, after mm-hmm. two months, your body starts craving junk food, carbs, mm. and then you get set back. <laughs> you Are you speaking back. for yourself here? No, I'm, well, it's an experience. <laughs> no, I can also it's an experience. Well, I'm, I'm no, in the gym with her. But I also, I've also experienced that as a young person as well. Is that you? You you set you set out to have a specific diet, and you want to 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 manage that diet. But then you, there's something that happens that you you get stressed out about something, and you just remember, you know what? McDonald's made me feel so good. Don't and let, then what happens? Don't let Mr. Ang hear you, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Ang, he, he's on on Fridays. Uncle Ang, he, he he's a McDonald's guy. But you know what? He's going nowhere. He's telling me stay there. Yeah. Now that's a good metabolism. Yeah, yeah, that's a good. Yeah, it is. But but your body does you. need carbs and so forth on. But do you think vegan is a way to go, or do you think it's just an agenda that that the media is pushing? Because celebra- a lot of mm-hmm. celebrities that mm-hmm. I know are doing vegan. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so it's actually now um, the, the move is what they call plant-based um, diet um, and that's getting all your nutrients from a plant-based because a lot of the meat products are now either, um, they're not what you know um, our folk would call um, homegrown. So everything is injected with a hormone or, you know, so the food is not what it used to be the, from the past. So then if we can move towards a plant-based, you'll see a lot of chronic inflammation, infections, all of that sort of come down. And then at the same time, the maintenance of one's weight. So that's why you see that move now towards that because industry has exploited, um, you know, the, the, the meat product industry to such an extent that it's more now commercialized it's not what it what it used to be where you can go out slaughter chicken and it's healthy meat mm. you know that sort of thing so that's where that's where why we go that's not what <laughs> it's like why we're we going but why where, where there's the shift now you know so yes you can get all your nutrients from a vegan a diet vegan. yes you can um, and that's why it's been sustained for such a long time and that's why it's being promoted and they've actually found that in Africa a plant-based diet that's where it was actually really it started where you had an American uh, journalist want to explore how are people looking so good staying healthy longer now I'm not talking about your infectious diseases like malaria and HIV and TB and all of those things but if you look at what foods um, the African population were eating it was really from the ground plant based and that's why they actually lived healthier lives so the research that he came in then to do like a um, research journalist and then stayed a couple of months in an African community, um, uh, North Africa, and found that he was healthier, he was not tired, um, he actually became more lean in his body, and he didn't even really exercise. And that comes, that also brings in that 80-20 rule, that if yeah. you maintain your diet, then yes, 20% is what you need to then actually keep the body going. So we're not disputing exercise, but we're also saying that uh, your nutrition is your biggest part. And I'm also a testament of that. I, I experienced that even when I was studying, when I was in UKZN, we, we created a, a, a eating plan for ourselves as, as a group of friends. And we, we worked out how we're going to eat, how we're going to um, exercise. And we worked it out. I can tell you that I lost the weight like it was nobody's business. I think that was the slimmest I've been in my entire life. Mm. And then when I came back to Joburg, now coming as a medical intern, you know, it was easy to just go quickly to to the the um, canteen. The, yeah, not even the canteen. Uh, I would, uh, to the, <laughs> to McDonald's. To to <laughs> 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 no, because again, I didn't. We didn't. I didn't grow up like that. You okay. know, where you can easy 
quickly get a, a, a food like that. It's just mm. so easy and quick. You didn't have to cook. You didn't have to, the effort is not there. And so what happens is you don't pay attention to the things that you're putting into your body because it's easy. You just sit and eat like this. And then the box master came from KFC. Oh my God. <laughs> then we made it a holiday. <laughs> Yay, man. So then you want to explore. What is this doing? What is that doing? So, um, and then you pick up the weight quick. I don't, you don't even notice that you're picking up the weight until you realize that you've picked up the weight. Mm. So yes, I agree with you. What happens is that you set yourself into a specific a pathway, but then you you feel like your body craves it. But what I've actually realized in this time, again, um, through the ministry, um, you at Crystal Church, you mentioned to us that we need to have a 10 year plan. Mm -hmm. And you know what happens is that when you think about diet, you think I need to have it now. Yeah. And, and that was a mind shift yeah. for me that it's not something that needs to happen now. And it's tormenting. And it's tom very, very, very tormenting. Very tormenting. Mm. But it needs to happen over time. You mm. need to pace oneself because you need to know what it is that you want to achieve. What do you want to maintain? Mm. And then you need to say, this is going to carry me. Mm. Because again, if you overweight, and even at the weight that I'm at, at right now, is that I, I, you can feel the joints at my age. Mm. I'm still very young, guys. But... <laughs> <laughs> She's defending herself. Yes. Defending. <laughs> So the I, dancing I, doctors the dancing, defending yes, yourself, yes. yeah. But so, it's, that is so true, yes, you know that. You because it. you can feel, and then can you imagine when you grow older? Yes, yes. Because uh, if you don't control your weight right now, yes. because your body's not built for it. Yes. For to one carry. reason, for, to carry that weight. Yeah. But also on the other end, there's mm. also, there, are, there are also people with big bone structure. You cannot expect them to be light again or not or is no, it just no. a myth? i think that's a myth the big bone really? structure yes what? yes it's very yeah. hereditary though because if you look at your family line you know where you where like what your your family line looks like mm. and you have to take into account what your your mother's side looks like and what your father's side looks like mm. and then if you put it to, into yourself then you can actually see a picture of if you look at yourself in the mirror truly you can say oh i've got the waist of my mom i've got no but just do <laughs> that true. one day you can yeah, you'll yeah, see yeah. oh i've got the backside <laughs> of this one i'm telling you so you have to and that thing yeah. has to click in your own mind to yeah. say this is what my plan is mm. this is what i want to achieve and this is what i'm going to maintain yeah because if you don't set realistic goals not over a short period of time exactly. but over time mm. then it's easy it's easier to manage it's easier to manage so yes i agree with you that um um, and again, it's in the mind, because if you say, you know what, I'm craving um, Nando's. So I'm, I'm using everybody. I'm not going to be specific to any yes, brand. Yes, yes, yes. For so me, I think is don't be too hard on yourself. Though. Don't be hard on yourself. So if you crave it, I mean, that one time is fine, you know, type of thing. And just again, from a personal note, for example, the one brand, you know, when you smell, you can smell it from a mile away, mm. you know, and when you're just driving now, this is, this is the <laughs> temptation when you're driving and you smell Man. it. So that for me was a thing, but I don't know. I had that again from that one service. I had that shift in my mind. Do I want it? Or is it that I'm telling myself that yes. I want it? Yeah. And so now for some reason, if I drive, I'm like, mm, that smells good. But then also but I, I don't like, want it. No, yeah, it's like something's like, mm, no, actually, mm. yeah. <laughs> like I, I actually told my sisters the other day because at work they brought, um, there's this new bucket that they've created. It's a small little bucket thing with wings or, or small pieces. And then I said, mm, no, that smells good. When I looked, I couldn't eat it. I, I felt like, no, this mm. is not for me. And then I think it's because I said to myself is that this is the culprit. <laughs> So if I go there, then that's that's my downfall. Jesse, we've got just a few minutes to wrap up. Is there any more questions for what, the for the dancing doctor here? What's your take on intermittent fasting? Mm. Because I do believe a lot of people say that breakfast is the most important meal yes. of the day. Yes. But then intimate intermittent fasting is also quite good, which is obviously skipping breakfast yeah. so so what's yeah. your take on yeah. that yeah so again you know it's about um finding what it is that would work for you because remember you're working out your plan for your diet your body type your blood type everybody's got now something that they're working towards what i would say is that you have to find something that works for you i would never never skip breakfast and i, I work in a in uh, not, uh, not that i wouldn't but i would not advise anybody not to miss because that's your essential breakfast for the day i'm um, your essential meal for the day they often say that you have to eat rich your midday lunch is like your you're almost um, broke and your supper is your poor meal mm -hmm. <laughs> because you have to eat rich in the morning you have to yeah. go for it you have to have a good well-balanced diet uh, uh, breakfast in the midday you have something almost that will carry you through because you want to keep the sugar level um stable yeah. just and then your just on that point yeah. you, you you may continue uh, uh, jc this this whole situation about 
breakfast. Is, yeah. Isn't that the word, the, the meaning of the word breaking the fast? Breaking the so fast. So you were you were sleeping, and yes. that's what I want you to explain. Yeah. Because you're going into a rest mode, so yes. you detox. You detox. Your brain detox. Mm. Your body, whatever is yeah. uh, taking place there. Yeah. And and why is your blood levels dropping? Like like uh, you, somehow you, you your blood le- your your blood pressure is completely low. Yeah. In the yeah. morning. In the morning. Mm. Well, what happens is that um, just to touch on quickly on the uh, the breaking of the fast. I agree with you. Is that you've been sleeping? You've already been fasting during that time. Mm-hmm. Eight <laughs> it's hours. just that no no activity, obviously, during that time. But again, your body's detoxing. It's finding its equilibrium. And then the important part about that it's sleep. Sleep should be part of your health program. Yeah, yeah then, but I don't get enough of it. <laughs> Sleep is actually good, eh? Sleep is because good. Because you're sharp in a, yes, by the morning. Yes, by the morning yeah. time. So yes, you're yeah. sharp in the morning time. So And it's and when then, you're sleeping when your muscles are actually growing. Yes, because remember with the tensions that we have during the day, you have your small microfibers that are breaking through. And then again, with exercise, you're getting that same effect. So at night, you're having that re- repair and regeneration. And that's where you can actually then build also muscle. And then in the morning part, when you break your fast, that's when you're replenishing. Particularly now we speak about the protein. And this is where I also advocate for my patients, um, particularly those who've got wound um, um, sepsis or we're repairing uh, the body now to come back to its natural. And we actually speak about a protein diet in the morning. Mm-hmm. And then they can continue with what, what uh, they had planned um, for, for that breakfast. But it's essential to have that because it's essential now to, while the body was busy detoxing, it was busy re- uh, regenerating. So it needs to put back, isn't it? And what mainly comes to the muscle is the protein that you need to put in so therefore those products your the 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 supplement not supplements the powders and that Mm, that's why you'll find that you'll take it in the morning you'll take it before you gym as well isn't it and then there's some yeah the yes yes yeah so you we need need to sign out here because wow 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 wow, wow, what a time you know (laughs) we're just enjoying ourselves this is one more this this is one more question uh, uh, dr mary before you go but give it to me as quick as possible why is it that um back in the day with when i was still in my parents home they didn't want you to to eat and go to bed immediately mm-hmm. give mm-hmm. talk about that because e- even my wife said no no we can't go to bed immediately let's take a walk specifically yes. if, this, uh, if we somewhere at the mm-hmm. place say no no let's first go for a walk or mm-hmm. let's go to the mall just uh, yeah. the shops are closed but let's just walk around yes. before you go to bed yeah what's so healthy about that but okay uh, you know Dave, uh doc I, I actually didn't answer your question quickly about the blood pressure but mm. just quickly what it happens is that when you're sleeping your blood pressure actually becomes um like a hypotensive and that's purely because everything is lying flat and also depending on your weight what happens is that you have all the blood like uh, weight onto the vena cava which is the main vessel um, that runs through the body so everything settles so that's why when when one gets up too quickly one can have that dizziness Mm. so it's that shift of equilibrium from Mm. one uh, resting position to another and so we call that a postural hypertension Mm. so that's why it it appears to be low that Mm. initial time that you can take it when you're actually moving Mm. from one position to another and now coming to the question about not um, um, eating, eating and, and then bed. going to bed. Mm. The whole idea is to allow for the food to digest. And what happens is that if you can imagine, um, you are now, you, you, you have this, okay? Now you've eaten and now you're in an upright position, you're walking, you're lying for food to digest. And then what happens is that now you decide, no, 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 I'm just gonna slouch. I'm gonna actually now think. So if you can imagine now this, let me just drink a little bit of this. <laughs> oh, that was not this? a little name. <laughs> <laughs> but you can <laughs> it was a little, little more, a little, little much, a little <laughs> too much, <laughs> a little too much. But if you can imagine now that this is your stomach and the food is inside there, remember it's connected still to, sorry, to the. Uh, to the eating pipe, which is from the mouth, the esophagus into the stomach. And so now when you slouch or you actually now uh, move to a laying position, what is happening Mm -hmm. from stomach back into the esophagus? So what can you imagine is happening there? What condition do we call that? Mm. It's reflux. So that's one of the things that can happen. So what do people know it? It's called heartburn. So people then suffer from heartburn. So it's a good idea to get the metabolism up again because you know, so what happens again is that you have that food, it doesn't digest well. So that's also that fatty part of it actually then doesn't also get absorbed. So where does it go? I need to call it hold there because we're going to get the doctor more in here <laughs> once a month at least we're going to discuss medical stuff here it's so good it was so good having you here the dancing doctor mary adam thank you so thank much you. for coming through to the so inside good. studio for everybody who played a wonderful role here jc be from behind the cameras to in front of the mics and then 
Clayton on the mics and then the producing Ellen um uh, Leandra Leandra I almost call you Eleanor there Leandra <laughs> thank you so much for, to everybody well please do me a big favor just subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so that you can get online every time when we're on we'll let you know that we're on from my side I love you God loves you best and uh, I'm signing out take care goodbye Good morning everybody! It is so good to have you here with me. Imagine if you have your vision as the car with the right team. Imagine how quick that vision will come into the footsteps. Something that was taking five years, six, three months. This morning is all about the leadership and influence. influence.